They both run almost stock builds of Android, and they each have a pretty close relationship with Google. But they come from different manufacturers, and one is aimed at the mass market, while the other is aimed at the enthusiast segment. How do they stack up? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Google Moto X versus HTC One Google Play Edition. As some of you might have deduced from our on-site reporting at the Moto X announcement yesterday in New York City, we're obviously still quite new to the phone. Only a day into the review period, in fact. As a result, we're still gathering a lot of data, and we're not going to be comparing these phones on all metrics, but just on the points we can. Even so, we've got a lot to talk about, so if you're wondering which version of the pure Android experience is better for you, tune in for our comparison of hardware, software, camera performance, and a few test notes. And follow Pocket Now at all the usual watering holes so you don't miss our full Moto X review when it lands. You don't need to get under the hood to see the physical differences here. These phones convey completely different intentions right out of the box. Though they both feature 4.7-inch displays, Motorola's is an AMOLED panel at 720p, meaning it's brighter and more saturated, but less sharp than the One's 1080p SLCD3. Is the difference in pixels per inch detectable? It depends on how sharp your eyes are, but most people probably won't notice the resolution reduction on the X, nor will they find much difference in direct sunlight performance. It's what surrounds the displays that really differs, and we're not just talking about the fact that the Moto X will come in a bevy of customizable colors. The materials are quite different as well, with the X's composite frame feeling soft and substantial to the touch. Even brand new, it feels totally natural to just throw this phone in a pocket with some keys and coins, because it seems like it can take it. The HTC One, on the other hand, with its polycarbonate accented unibody aluminum, precision machined speaker grills and chamfered trim work feels almost more like a piece of jewelry. It's not that it feels fragile, but it almost feels too nice to throw around like you'd throw around the X. And it definitely doesn't have the splash resistant nano coating that the X does either. The one is also much larger in the hand thanks to its boom sound speakers at top and bottom. In fact, it's hard to believe the Moto X packs the same size display as the one considering how much more compact it feels. Google has done its best to de-emphasize specs in its marketing and literature for the Moto X, reinforcing the position that this is a phone for the every person, not the gadget geek. But that latter group is pretty passionate about its numbers, so a quick glance at the heart of these phones is in order. The One is the more conventional device, with a quad-core Snapdragon 600 at 1.7 GHz backed up by 2 GB of RAM and 32 GB of non-expandable storage, along with a non-removable battery rated at 2300 mAh. The X retains the non-removable battery, but bumps its capacity down to 2200 mAh, and it also offers a lower capacity 16GB storage version alongside a 32GB model. Once again, no micro SD here, but Moto X buyers will receive 50 gigs of free Google Drive storage, which should help somewhat. The real difference here is in the processing guts. There's still 2 gigs of RAM on board, but the system architecture is built around Motorola's X8 mobile computing system. That's a Snapdragon S4 Pro at 1.7 GHz with the Adreno 320 GPU, linked to two additional cores, one for natural language processing and the other for contextual computing. While the raw power of this system, or lack thereof compared to quad-core devices like the One, is being criticized in comment sections all across the internet, once again, it's not designed for horsepower, it's designed to offer a very specific software experience. That experience runs atop Android 4.2.2 on our demo unit, the same version found on our Google Edition HTC One, but there are some added features specific to the Moto X that Google will be pushing hard to consumers. We'll check them out more completely in our full review, but these features include something called Touchless Control, which leverages that language processing core to allow the Moto X to constantly listen for a key phrase. So saying, OK Google now, within earshot of the X, even when it's idly sitting in standby mode, triggers touchless control and allows you to set calendar appointments, look something up on the internet, start a navigation session, set an alarm, and so on. There's also Motorola's new active display, which uses the X's contextual computing core to keep an eye on the gyro and proximity sensors so that when you pick it up or flip it over, you'll get a quick preview of the notifications you missed. You can then act on the notifications or dismiss or ignore them without ever unlocking the phone. 
Another feature, called Motorola Assist, also helps the phone stay in context a little better, modifying notification behavior if it detects you're driving in a car, say, or in a meeting or asleep. And Motorola Connect works with Google Chrome to allow you to display caller ID and send and receive text messages right from your computer. Neither HTC nor Motorola have historically been lauded for their smartphone camera performance. HTC has recently been making a push to change that with the 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera on the One with its optical image stabilization and superior low light performance. But that's on the stock HTC One. The Google Play edition of the device retains the hardware but removes HTC's software customizations, leaving you with the vanilla Android viewfinder that's clean, but not exactly easy or intuitive. On the Moto X, the software customization starts right on the first boot of its 10 megapixel clear pixel camera. If you want, you can skip tapping an icon and jump right into the viewfinder with a double flick of the wrist. It's pretty awkward, but it might come in handy with more practice. Once the camera is open, you're given a pretty smooth and pretty fluid UI with a rotating disc off to the left for controlling just a few tweakable options for stills and video. It's simple, and other features like tap to focus and snap and the scroll directly into the gallery remind us a lot of Windows Phone's shooting experience. That's a good thing. In terms of the results, well, they're hit and miss on both of these phones. In bright sunlight or other similarly even and bright lighting, they perform fairly well, though it might take some tweaking of the HDR settings to get the balance you're looking for on each. But even in these brightly lit samples, the Moto X's color reproduction is pretty obviously inferior to the One. Shots come out oddly tinted, and the colors substantially more muted than on the One. Now, Motorola calls this the clear pixel camera, owing partially to the quick exposures it can capture. But if the cost is saturation dampening like this, which doesn't seem correctable no matter what settings we use, it's not worth it. That holds true in low light photos as well. While the One puts out plenty of noise in its own low light pics, it's nothing compared to the X, which produces photos heavy in artifacts and, once again, subpar saturation. Despite the ostensibly quick captures, the X's shots are also prone to motion blur and lens flare if there's a close off camera light source. It's just not a terribly good low light camera. And frankly, without HTC's software, neither is the Google Play Edition One. All this holds true in video as well, with the HTC One having a harder time keeping up with focus, but on the whole delivering richer colors and sharper results than the dull and sort of dead Motorola X footage. This may well be due to some overly aggressive HDR on the Moto X, and we'll take a closer look in the full review, but as of now, our vote for the superior shooter goes to the HTC One, and that extends to its wider angle front-facing shooter as well. Fortunately, things pick back up again in more conventional testing areas. Using both of these devices on AT&T in rural New York State gave us the opportunity to test them on both 3G and 4G LTE, and they consistently provide comparable, if not identical, reception. Voice quality is similar, with excellent noise cancellation on both units. In fact, the only complaint we heard in voice testing was that background noise from our end sounded too quiet, as though the call had been dropped when we weren't speaking. That's despite some stiff breeze on our side too, so each of these phones can be trusted to deliver a solid voice experience. For what it's worth, we found the Moto X the more comfortable of the two to talk on, physically, thanks to its more substantial, curved build. In terms of loudspeaker audio, putting any device up against HTC's boom sound dual front speakers usually results in a bloodbath, but not this time. Motorola knows what it's doing acoustically, and when streaming music, the X delivers clear sound that's actually substantially louder than the One. It's not as dynamic, maybe, and it's around back, which is as annoying here as it ever is, but it's pretty solid nonetheless. All that brings us back to the question of what you're looking for. With the HTC One only available at nearly $600 unlocked from the Play Store, it's an enthusiast phone a niche product for developers and those who want the superior hardware of the One with the untainted software of stock Android, and a superior, though lower resolution, camera. The Moto X will be cheaper at $199 on contract when it launches on the major US nationals this month, and it includes some added value as well in terms of Google's futuristic new features and a more rough and tumble, but still comfortable design. So while the One may be the more powerful device, it may also be the more limited one, depending on your mobile lifestyle. 
As Google recently reminded us with the X's initial marketing material, it's not always about the specs. Folks, we have a lot more posted and a lot more to come on the Moto X from Google, both here on our YouTube channel page and at pocketnow.com. So visit us over there, but before you go anywhere, please drop us a like if you enjoyed the video, leave us a comment down below if you have something to say, and follow us on social media so you don't miss future content. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thanks for watching.